Hello, and welcome to More Than Words, a podcast about treating the whole child brought to you by the Reading and Language Learning Center. I'm your host, Tristan, and today I'm joined by child development specialist, Gabrielle Nicolet, to discuss Orchid Kids. Hi, Gabrielle. How are you? Hi, Tristan. So good to be back. Oh, we're so happy to have you back. If you guys haven't listened, we had another episode with Gabrielle back in, oh, we were discussing this earlier. It was sometime last year, sometime 2021. So mm-hmm. I'll link her previous podcast episode so you guys can listen to that. But today it's Orchid Kids. So I'm yeah, going to have I Gabrielle mean- introduce herself, tell us who she is and what she does. So um, I'm so excited that we're talking about Orchid Kids, first of all. (laughs) But before we start that, I am um, a speech language pathologist by training. I call myself the head toddler whisperer over at my private speech therapy practice, which is Speech Kids. Um, And I'm also more recently a certified um, life coach and parenting coach at an organization called Raising Orchid Kids. Um, So hence why we're going to be talking about these orchids and who they are and what they do. I love it. So you said you're at Raising Orchid Kids and then you're also the head toddler whisperer. Where can people find you in the world, but then also like, where are you online? Yes, we are all over the place. Okay. We are at RaisingOrchidKids.com. Perfect. Or RaisingOrchidKids at gmail.com. Easy. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Done. Fantastic. (laughs) You'll find everything else from there. (laughs) Wonderful. I'll link it down below so people can find you everywhere. (laughs) Fantastic. All righty. Let's hop into it. So first and foremost, if someone has never heard of an orchid kid before, can you define it? That? Yes. There's some really interesting research. We did not make up this term, by the way. This term has been kind of in the wind since early 2000. It, orchid, the, the term orchid child or orchid kid refers to a child who is by temperament and or by the way that I define it and or by something else. So, for example, a speech and language de, uh, delay or disability, um, a developmental delay or disability. So a child who is more sensitive to their environment than some other types of kids the children that we sort of oppose them with um, are dandelions. So dandelions are flowers that will, what, grow in a crack in the sidewalk. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And they will be very beautiful there. (laughs) They will be vibrant and yellow, and they will do their thing no matter what the conditions, the conditions of the soil, how much water they have, how much sunlight, right? Right. They're pretty indestructible. Orchids, by contrast require a certain pH balance to the soil right. and a certain amount of water and a certain amount of light. And when they get that, so here's the thing, right? When they get it, they're incredible, beautiful, hardy flowers. Right. And if they don't, they don't do so well. <laughs> so <laughs> those are the kids we're talking about, right. right? They're the kids that when we give them what they need in the way that they need it, they do very, very well. Right. And if they don't, these are not the kids who are just going to kind of go with the flow. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they can't. They can't and they won't. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of different things that that I love about raising orchid kids. Number one is the term because it's not stigmatizing. Right. Right? Like we don't blame an orchid for being an orchid. We don't expect it to be a dandelion. Right. And I think that that is crucial yeah. In just like how we start thinking about our kids, mm-hmm. all children are different. All people, again, they come here on this planet as they are. Right. Um, and anybody who's had more than one child knows they are all different from the moment they arrive. <laughs> right. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Right. <sighs> and so if we're open to the notion that, that, Again, all kids are different and different kinds of flowers, right? Or if we wanted to use right. that metaphor again, if it if it serves, then we stop being so resentful mm-hmm. that our kids an orchid and not a dandelion. Right. And does it make some things harder? Absolutely. Right. Is is their life a little bit harder, a lot harder sometimes? Yes. Yeah. That just means that that's their path. Right. Is all it means. So interesting that you said that. So I didn't realize Orchid Kids was 
like a more broad term. You said it's from like early 2000s. Do you know mm-hmm. where that came from? There, the way that I found it, and I don't know, I, I tried to do a little bit of digging on the internet, which, you know, um, <laughs> right. for better or for worse. Right. Thomas Boyce, Thomas Boyce is a developmental pediatrician. He has a great TED talk that you can watch about the orchid and the dandelion. I'm okay. going to put that in the show notes too, if you, if you have a second. Um, he also wrote a, a book. Okay. And he studied adverse childhood experiences, ACEs. Hmm. Um, so these are things like childhood abuse and neglect, you know, um, poverty, the, these kinds of indicators that indicate vulnerability right. in the population. Um, and it's not explicitly included, but I certainly would include, again, developmental, um, neurological differences, delays, and disorders under ACEs right. for starters. Yeah. And I think that conversation is beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, so- Again, this is kind of a, a broadening and a and a mm, I don't know stretching of the def- of the original definition by okay. Thomas Boyce. Very cool. Okay, good to know. So, when you have an orchid kid come into your clinic or come to you for a consultation, what kind of like program class anything do you offer to not the child but their actual their parent? Yeah. So yeah. Over at Raising Orchid Kids, so Speech Kids deals with the kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Raising Orchid Kids um, at the website and through our parent classes um, helps parents, number one, understand why their orchid is doing the things that the orchid is doing. Cool. Um, Because Orchid Kids, because the world is hard for them, it's hard for them to like figure out how to be I literally think of it this way, Tristan, how it's hard for them to learn to be in their bodies on this planet. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And like, that sounds a little bit woo woo, except it's, it's not, it's not (laughs) right. (laughs) Right. They, they, it's, it's difficult for them to stay calm, to stay Mm. regulated, to stay in a state of learning so that they can talk and run and play and interact and, and obey, like follow Mm -hmm. directions. Right. Right. Um, And so often when parents are coming into a parenting class that we run quarterly, they're coming in with things like my kid doesn't listen or my kid has 45 minute meltdowns in target. Right. Um, Right. Or, we can't go anywhere because if we go anywhere, he screams the whole time. Mm-hmm. And so what we're doing in our classes is going through some of the whys and the wherefores about how that's happening, why that's happening. And then also we have tons of practical strategies um, for what to do about it. Yeah. That's awesome. So when a parent comes in and they're they're learning all the whys and they're learning what to do, what kind of questions do they ask you? Like Mm. what happens in a session and like, what do they end up gaining afterwards? So we have a little bit of curriculum that we do. It's a group class. One of the things we do over at Raising Orchid Kids is this group class. It's six weeks, meets once a week. We have one starting this summer um, in a group. The thing that's magical about that, we, we, Jen and I, I have a a co-founder, Jen Dreyer, who's an educator. Um, we like to think that we've developed this really excellent curriculum, but honestly, I think they come for the community. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is, it's often the first time they're meeting other parents whose child, again, has a 45 minute meltdown at the grocery store. Right. Or who smears feces on the wall, right? Or who's mm-hmm. four and a half, five years old and not potty trained yet. Right. Those are not conversations that you're having with your next door neighbor whose kids are the same age. Right. Right. And so they come to the group and they come to the class and they get all that solidarity and support. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to explain a single thing. Right. Because everybody already gets it. Right. And so that that is sort of within 15 minutes, you can see everybody's shoulders just relax. Like, yeah. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Like, thank goodness I'm amongst other people who get me. Yeah. They yeah. really like, yes. And we do, we often do a, like a ping pong round at the end of the session mm-hmm. after the, after each session. Um, and again, the class is six weeks and, and I write down the words, you know, that people say. So we do yeah. this, like just one word, what'd you get today? Um, community is one that comes up a lot. Solidarity, 
confidence is another one that yeah. comes up, you know, relief. Yeah. It's so, it's so amazing. Like it's so, I, I, you can see me like, I, <laughs> I get very excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So we kind of talked about like the kind of feedback that parents give you, but do you have a hard time getting parents in the room to like raising orchid kids? Like, do you see more parents saying like, here's my kid deal with them. And then you're like, you should really come to raising orchid kids. And they're like, Meh, maybe. No. Okay. Um, I think the people who come know that there's a parental component. Okay. That's good. Um, yes. Um, I think, and honestly, because of the way, well, I don't know why, but in my practices, we don't have a lot of parents who are like, here, right. um, fix this, right? Even if, even if they're coming to the class hoping that we will tell them what to do, right. <laughs> which we sometimes do, and mostly we don't, <laughs> um, right? Because we never meet the kids right. in, many, in most cases. Um, so over at Raising Orchid Kids, we're really sort of navigating, okay, what are you seeing? So mm-hmm. let's put on your detective hat, parent, and figure out, okay, what what's happening, number one. Right. Why is it happening, number mm-hmm. two. Very important, right? And the, the the corollary of that is it's not to piss you off. Right. <laughs> right? It's not <laughs> happening because they're trying to make you crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and <sighs> then come the strategies. And so that's where we might do a little bit of prescribing or okay. suggesting Yeah. Um, One of the things we really focus on a lot are setting up predictable routines. Mm. Um, When families have predictable routines, this is true of orchids. It's true of all children and orchids are the ones who really need Need this much of the time. Um, When kids know what the expectations are, then they stop worrying Mm -hmm. and they act a whole lot better. Right. Um, and it just like helps everybody calm down. I helped a family. Um, we workshop sort of a schedule at one of our Q and A's recently. Um, and we, we sort of figured out a rough schedule for weekends because weekends were kind of a disaster. And it was because people were sleeping late and not changing out of their, out of their pajamas. And then like, it would be noon and everybody would be screaming at each other. Yeah. And so because the weekday routine was get up, have breakfast, get dressed, go to school we transfer that over to the weekend. And so it's get up, have breakfast, get dressed, go outside. Love it. Right. So, so that no longer becomes, um, you, you, you've just got some forward momentum and everybody knows what's expected. Right. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Um, so when COVID first hit, let's head back there (laughs) and you know, the world shut down, Parents got to spend a lot of extra time with their kids at home and they could observe any things that they maybe wouldn't have seen if their kid was at school all day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Did you see an increase in need for raising orchid kids and just like (laughs) need for support in general (laughs) after (laughs) the beginning of COVID? Yeah. I think, you know, what's interesting, Tristan, is many orchids, not all, but many orchids because of this routine thing, they did really well when their parents were home with them. Mm. Because we as a society, particularly in this area of the country, but I think just generally in, in 2022, we've got, we make a lot of demands of our children. We have a lot of schedules. Adults have a lot of schedules. There's a, right. You can feel it. I'm like amping up right now. Right. Can you feel that in your gut? You're like, (laughs) and during COVID, Mm. all of that went away. Yeah. Now, that's not to say parents weren't stressed trying to manage kids at home and work at home and like, oh my God. Right. But it did cut down on the number of transitions that kids were experiencing. Hmm. And that was soothing to many orchids. And so I think some of the issues didn't emerge until we people started going back into the world. Interesting. Right? Because we all have... And this is true for everybody. Again, I like to say like the things that are true about orchids are true for everybody else, just not quite as much. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we all have our way of being at home. Right. And we all have our way of being in the world. Mm-hmm. And that's fine, except when we can't make the adjustment. And orchids often 
have a hard time making the adjustment. Yeah. Transitions are kind of rough for them. Yeah. Most like just kind of overall. Right. Yeah. And so that's the moment when I feel like you saw more of a need. Yeah. Yeah. And what did that look like? Did it just look like people were like, oh my gosh, this came out of nowhere. I don't know what to do. Or did people, were people aware? I think that it's hard to say. Yeah. I, in my experience, there's a moment when the, the worry that you've been pushing down for so long erupts and you're spurred into action. Right. And that point is different. That duration is different. Like how long people can resist. Mm -hmm. Um, in my experience, parents often say, I've been kind of worried about this for a while, yeah. but it was COVID or, but he was young, but the pediatrician said it was fine, but right. my mom said it was fine, but his dad was a late talker. Like just, I mean, there's any number of things mm -hmm. that we allow ourselves as parents. And I did it too when my kids were young, <laughs> you know, to like, just, um, soothe us enough to keep going without having to take some drastic action or what we think is drastic action. Right. Right. <laughs> so we talked about like the classes that you offer for parents and families of an orchid child, but what other resources, I know you have a lot of really fun things you do over on your social media, but like what other things resources do you offer to families of or an orchid child? Um, so we have, right. So we have the classes that, um, meet quarterly again for six weeks. Once right. you complete a class, you can come into the ongoing membership. That's a oh. monthly program. It's priced at a ridiculously low fee <laughs> um, because we want people in there and because it's so much right. fun. We have a great time in there. Yeah. Um, we meet twice a month. We've got webinars. We've got all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's kind of on the group side. Individually, um, Speech Kids offers individual speech therapy. Right. Um, and I have a team that provides that, but I also am doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching through raising orchid kids, um, for parents who feel like they really want a tailored approach to right. their particular child. Okay. Um, and that can involve some observation of the child that can involve sort of a hybrid of, um, of sort of parent conversation and then maybe some, you know, some, some interactions with, with the child if right. we need to. Cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just watched, oh my goodness, uh, on Disney Plus, yeah. a short called Float. It's um, about a, a baby and a dad. And it is dedicated to, at the end, there's a dedication for for children who are different. Um, and it's, it's got some, I'm not going to, I'm not going to reveal too much, but if you're okay. listening to this and you, you want sort of a feel good reframe for, yeah. um, for orchids and dandelions, this is, I was, I was absolutely in tears. Oh. Anybody, anybody who knows me will not be surprised by that, but, <laughs> um, it was a gorgeous little movie. It's only about six minutes. Yeah. Um, about acceptance and, um, embracing, you know, who you have in your family. Right. You know, I mean, we do something crazy when we have children, Tristan, yeah. we invite strangers to live in our house yeah. for 18 or more years. <laughs> like who does that? Who does it? That is some crazy business. Yeah. <laughs> and then, right. And then we want to argue that they're not a certain way. And it's like, well, honey pumps, you brought me home. Like right. deal with me. <laughs> deal with it now. Thank you. And guess what? I'm my own human. It's so interesting though. And, and, you know, part of that too, and part of what we do in raising orchid kids is really, um, examine. So one of the first things we do in the first class is examine how we were parented. Mm, okay. How we're choosing to parent our children. Right. And where that comes from and right. why we're doing it that way, because it's, there's nothing like a child, our own child in particular, other people's children are fine. Um, there's nothing like your own child to trigger all your unresolved garbage that you have right. from growing up. Right. And either you've dealt with that in some form of therapy prior to having children. And if you haven't, we sure as hell are going to deal with it right. when we have kids, particularly if we have orchids. Now, here's the other thing is all parents parents of dandelions. There's also tulips who are like, you know, like sort of, maybe they don't need intervention, but they're kind of like, mm. yeah. Um, and orchids. Okay. Across the spectrum, all children are going to tax parents oh. and bring up their stuff. Yeah. 
It's just that in general, dandelions and tulips are not going to do it till much later. Mm. And orchids are going to force you early to deal with that stuff. So interesting. That is like, and and the only reason I can say that is I have a 19 year old who is completely a dandelion, just right. kind of like adapts with whatever happens. And we, I am going through my shift with him and right. I am having to do some serious work on myself right. as I na- navigate parenting him, which again, parenting him, it's not very active at this point. It's more right. of a coach role, right? But still, you have to deal with that stuff at some point or another. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, uh, I, I, I love early intervention because it is a gift it is a lifelong gift to the child, right. but I also love, you know, parents of young children who come in for coaching, who come in to look at themselves mm-hmm. because that is a gift that not only are you giving to your former child self <laughs> and your current adult self, but right. also to your child. Yeah. Um, and so it, uh, it's just like such a beautiful thing. It is really beautiful. <laughs> It sounds like every everyone should go to raising orchid kids, even if you don't have an orchid kid. Y'all come, <laughs> everyone just come. come. <laughs> everyone just come take a class. <laughs> oh wow, wow, so so cool. Anything else that you want to share? No, I think I think that's it. Um, no, because the next the next conversation I want to have with you is about sleep. <gasps> that sounds very interesting. There are some really important things that we're learning about sleep yeah, um, and breathing Ooh, that are like underneath all of this stuff that we're right. talking about. Um, so we can, we can do we that, can but that's for come another back day. To <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We'll come back to that and discuss okay. it later. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. But I will say like bedtimes, yeah. super important. Like really? part of that routine. Oh, please. Orchids need Okay, this is the, this is another thing, right? Okay. All children and especially orchids, yeah, need enough sleep. Mhm. All people, yeah, and especially orchids, right, need enough sleep. Right. Sleep is essential to brain function. Right. This is like clear in the research. Yeah. Um and when we don't put our orchids to bed early enough, and when they don't get enough sleep, then then behavior. So behavior mm-hmm. can result directly from a lack of sleep. That's insane. I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah, I know. But if someone's not drawing that line, right. you might not think of it. Right. And so again, often in class, um, you know, we'll be talking about, oh, today was a terrible day for my kiddo. Well, what did his sleep look like? Oh, we had a terrible night last night. Ding, ding, ding. That's it. There you go. That's it. And then, so here's the thing, right? Our brains want to be like, this is a big problem. My yeah. kid had a bad day. This is a huge problem. Like, and this is then your brain goes to work trying to solve the problem. Once we realize, oh, he had a bad night's sleep. Everybody has a bad day. Right. Now it's not a problem. Right. Right. Now we're not forcing him to like do some new task <laughs> that you know, because we know he doesn't feel good. Right. And who wants to like give a presentation when you haven't had your morning coffee? No. Nobody. No one does. <laughs> no one. No. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, often, often in class, we're asking about bedtimes. We're asking about um, exercise. We're asking about Ooh. diet. Oh. Um, Interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. So what does – what do you end up having as like recommendations for exercise at, just for like other parts of the day that aren't yeah. necessarily already part of someone's schedule? So orchids tend again, and this, these are, you know, every there's a, it's broad. This is a big group. It's broad, right. but orchids tend to be very sensitive to their environmental conditions right. and orchids tend to really benefit from being outside. Oh, interesting. Yes. Many because there's natural light. Mm-hmm. It's soft, you know, oh. um, if you're not in a city, you know, so there's right. grass and trees and like, and constitutionally sort of physiologically orchids are more sensitive to their environment. Right. 
right? And so that includes sort of how they take in, but also how they give out okay. information. And so when they're outside, there's more, there's literally more air, there's <laughs> right. more space, there's more, <laughs> right? There's more room and fewer demands, fewer okay. um, hard right. edges. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> and so we, again, one of the, and then there are, it's not that there was like a set prescription for anybody, but right. one of the general rules of thumb, one of the strategies that we often give people is how much outside time is your orchid getting? Can mm-hmm. we build in some more? Right. Um, physical activity is another thing. Like our bodies are simply not made to sit to around sit. all day. Right. Right. Um, they were made to move. And so right. can we get that body moving? Um, can we get that body physically tired enough yeah. to have a good night's sleep, <laughs> to integrate all the learning that we've had through the day and right. make it through the next one? Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, so, yeah. Very cool. So it sounds like get get a nice routine going, but it's got to include some kind of physical activity. This sounds like what you know, you grow up and you like become an adult and people say to you, you know what, you should really schedule in some exercise time and some you time. And you're like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. I'll get there. And then yep. if you don't get there, you're forced to get there. <laughs> well, and this is the other thing about orchids. They force their parents, right? Because they're stressing out their parents to such right. a degree that you hit that wall a lot earlier than you might otherwise might have. Because right. again, all empty nesters, are going to deal with this of like needing to take time for themselves because mm-hmm. then because they no longer take care of their children right right when you have to take care take care take care take care and you're getting pushed to the max you come that that fry point you know mm-hmm. <laughs> um a lot faster a lot earlier and then you're either going to burn out right or you're going to start taking some corrective action right right and, and I think the fact is most of us in modern day life, we sort of skate by with a semi unhealthy, but not kind of over the line, um, experience mm-hmm. until something happens. And sometimes right. the, an orchid kid is what happens. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, this has been fantastic. I've loved learning about orchid kids because before this, I th- think I had like a vague idea of like mm-hmm. what orchid kid meant, but it wasn't like a, yes, I get the definition now. And I, I'm with you on, I love the term because it doesn't, doesn't give a connotation in any which way. It's just yeah. like, this is an orchid. This is a dandelion. This is how they both are. Mm-hmm. So I really love that. So thank yeah. you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's always so fun to talk to you, Tristan. Same to you. And I always learn about, or like get to relive some kind of fun moment. Like last time we had, um, we talked about the kid and the dad talking to each other on the couch, even though the baby was saying just nonsense. Yes. 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 So I love that we got to do that last time. And now I have a new short to watch on Disney plus. There you go. (laughs) Videos for everybody. Videos for everyone. (laughs) But have lots of rules around screen time. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much for coming and teaching us all your ways. (laughs) Thanks, Tristan. Of course. Till next time. Yes, exactly. Till next time, we'll have you on to talk about sleep. Thanks for the to the audience for listening and uh, make sure to give us a little rating and review and to subscribe so you know when we have fun new episodes like this one out. So thank you so much and we'll see you next time.